And hello everybody, my name is Peter, and today in this video I am going to be doing some experimentation with a slightly new medium of art that is drawing on birch wood panels. And this is interesting to me because um, it's something I'm struggling with mentally, that is finding myself pouring lots and lots of time and effort into making drawings on pieces of paper, but then the fact that these drawings are just on pieces of paper feels like it devalues them a little bit. No, I know it doesn't really. Like the drawings are still just as good, maybe whether they're on paper or anything else, but in my very limited experience with selling art and seeing what people are attracted to, um, you know, maybe I'm overanalyzing it, but people like bigger things, more substantial things, and by substantial, I mean maybe uh, like a big wooden panel or a canvas as opposed to uh, a flimsy piece of paper, right? Anyways, it also makes me feel better if I finish a drawing and it feels more physically substantial as well, and it doesn't feel like it could just blow away in the wind. Of course, it does take a little bit more space to store, but anyways, I think this is an interesting avenue for at least for me to at least explore. Now, let me explain what I'm doing here in this video, the process. So I, I have these two little birch panels, and I think I'm gonna be using much larger panels, at least like 18 by 24, right? But I have some little ones to experiment with to try out the process. I got some water-based polyurethane at the uh, at Home Depot, and I got that just, I got water-based just because it seemed like it'd be easier to clean up, it'd be easier to clean the brush, and if I made any messes or spills, it would be easier. I don't actually know if it's better or worse for this application than um, regular oil-based polyurethane. If anyone has any opinion on that, feel free to weigh in. But So I got a little can of the water-based polyurethane, and then I put two coats of the, of the polyurethane onto each panel after sanding the panel briefly, lightly, with a 400 grit. No, 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 120 grit sandpaper. I don't know why I did the, the, that little sanding before putting the polyurethane on, maybe just to I think I even made it rougher than the panel was when it came. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad for putting polyurethane on, I'm not sure. I put two coats on, and basically the idea of put of pre-treating it with polyurethane is, I, is because I want to draw on these with Posca paint pens, which you'll see me doing. If I just go straight onto the wood with the paint pens, which these are very nice paint pens and they're completely capable of doing, okay? These paint pens can draw on almost anything in my experience. I've tried drawing on lots of different things and they do incredibly well. Um, they're also really good at drawing on skin, by the way. If you want to draw on yourself, they are very good at that. I love these things. But they're probably my favorite paint pens. Um, anyways, I, I put the polyurethane on there, first of all, so that the wood... Oh yeah, after I put two coats on there, then I hit it with the 400 grit sandpaper. Just to, I wanted a really nice, smooth surface to draw on, and I was afraid that the wood would be a little bit rougher on the tips, So, because I, I wanted the tips of the pens to last as long as possible. The pens are a little bit expensive, not prohibitively expensive, but I don't want to waste them by grinding them the, away on the wood. And also, by putting the coat of polyurethane on there, it keeps the, the, the paint from seeping into the wood. That way I don't use up as much paint and the pens last longer. And also it keeps the paint from seeping into the wood and feathering along the wood grain. So it keeps my lines more crisp. Now in the future, I'm thinking I might do even more coats, like maybe three or four coats of the polyurethane before I start because there still was a little bit of feathering, just a tiny bit, like every now and then I would see a little line um, shoot off from my line that I drew and go up through the wood grain. But I think that could easily be solved with like Two, one or two more coats of the polyurethane, and it would be just fine. And yeah, so then, I, and then, so I drew my pictures on there, and I think I, I might take one of them and put another coat of polyurethane on top. I'm not sure what point that would have, except for maybe preservation. But maybe I could um, use my furniture polish that I use, also Brie Wax. That's what I used to put on top of my uh, all my wood burnings. I put Brie Wax on top of. Maybe that's just good to keep it, help it keep it from. See, I don't, I don't think the, 
the, these black markers, the paint pens, I don't think it, there's a problem with it fading in the in the sunlight, but maybe it will just help preserve it in the long run. That's basically, like, keep it from chipping as soon. I don't think that would happen anytime soon, but maybe in, like, 10 years it might start chipping. I really have no idea. Um, but maybe one of them. Maybe each one. Maybe one of them I'll try. I, I don't show this in the video because I haven't even done it yet, but maybe one of them I'll try putting a coat of polyurethane on, and another one I'll try putting a coat of the Brie Wax on, which, I mean, it is furniture polish, but I used it for all sorts of other stuff, and I think it's pretty good. Now, the point of these drawings is not to create masterpieces, but have you ever gotten a a new car that was a, not even gotten a new car, but maybe rented a car or driven someone else's car that was a much different size than yours, right? Handled differently, like maybe you're used to driving a little sedan and then you drive someone's um, SUV or something and it takes you a little while just to be kind of become accustomed to it. It takes you a little while to figure out like which parking spaces you can easily fit into and how to back it up easily and uh, just the handling before you really become comfortable driving the vehicle, right? That's kind of the point of these two little uh, panels. It's just become a, accustomed to the new medium because lots of times a new medium is very useful for me because it brings a lot of new inspiration because I get excited about new things, right? Fresh things, fresh ideas, uh, and you know, fresh energy. But also, uh, you can't com completely focus on drawing or making the actual art because you're focusing on you know, how to hold the pen and how it works and how it moves across the board and all this other stuff. There's all these little other factors that uh, haven't become second nature yet. So that's the point of these. I'm just trying to figure out the best process, become accustomed to it, get used to it. And uh, I think I think it's definitely working because I definitely like the second drawing more than the first drawing. But they both turn out pretty good. And I'm happy with the line quality. And I'm just happy with it all around. I really am. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to suggest that it's all about money, but some of it is about money. Like every, not every artist, but... I think a lot of artists would love to be able to sell their actual art and and, and live off of selling the things they create, right? Um, right now, I don't really live off of selling the things I create. I more live off of like placing ads alongside the things I create, which is kind of the same thing. But it would be cool to... Um, I, I, maybe I would just feel better about... Pray, pricing my drawings higher if they were not just flimsy pieces of paper or something like that. I don't know. It's just some mental barrier for me or something. I'm not sure. But then again, on the other side of the equation, there also has to be the right amount of demand. So that also motivates me to try to create cooler and better things so that I can price them higher and they will also sell. And, you know, if it's a piece of wood instead of a piece of paper maybe people will desire that more. And in my experience, like I have made like drawings and posted them on my website that I think are amazing and I have a harder time selling them. So I, I, maybe it's because they're on a piece of paper, but then sometimes I spend like an hour or two making a painting on a canvas and, I, and, and it sells so much faster and easily for so much more. And I'm like, I, and I'm just sitting here trying to figure out, is it because... It's not a piece of paper because that's the main difference I can find. Or it could be because it's colorful and paint and it looks better on the wall. And um, I don't know. Doing drawings on a big piece of wood could help with that. I don't know. I am very thankful for all the people who buy my art. I'm not trying to devalue that or anything. I'm very thankful. Anyway, so I'm, I'm excited. I think these two turned out well. And then I think I'll go on to larger panels after this, which could look really cool on... Uh, on walls and there's a lot of other ways you can go with this. Uh, I could add my own frames and I could use other colors of paint pens that could get interesting. I could um, stain the wood different colors to get different effects in the background, stuff like that. Add paint and stuff, but I might just keep it simple with just simple black lines because it, it does add a just a whole nother dimension having the wood grain in the background, right? I think it's cool. 
anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Let me know if you have any ideas about this or if you've tried something similar or if you have any like ideas of directions I could go with this, different mediums or, you know, different pens or types of finish or polyurethane or sandpaper. You know, I'm just, I kind of have the approach where I don't really do a lot of research. I just do the trial and error technique. So this was one of my first trials and thankfully I haven't had too many errors yet. So um, hopefully I don't get too far into the process and get too ingrained and entrenched before I run into an error. Because sometimes if I get too far and then I run into an error, I just kind of keep the error and go with it and just kind of count the errors part of the process instead of reevaluating because I'm too stuck in my ways, you know? So, uh, yeah. Anyways, see y'all later. Have a good one. Okay. All right. Goodbye.